ID. You know, we've got a we've got a great selection of buzzards in in Southern Africa. The the birds in the top row are the more sort of uh, regular species. There are four species, you know, from common forests, jackal and auger, and then also mystery buzzard as well. So you can, I guess you could count that as five sort of resident resident buzzard species. Then in the bottom row, you've got four four not so common, I, I guess, scarce on the one hand to really rare vagrants uh, as well. So the, the the presentation this evening is going to focus on uh, the top row. Uh, I think you know to to try and cover all of them in sort of a great level of detail uh, won't really do it justice. So I'm going to I'm going to focus on the um, the more sort of I guess the commoner the commoner buzzards, and uh, and then also just touch on touch on the scarcer species. The um, so I think it's important before before one dives into the detail of of actual buzzard identification. It's important to really sort of understand some context. So. Buzzard taxonomy. So, so old world, old world uh, butios or buzzards. They are. So this is the distribution of common buzzard, which is butio butio, and it's thought based on based on research that a lot of Africa's uh, or rather old world buzzards are a um, are descendants of butio butio. So the the dark green on the left, or the the green represents the European range of common buzzard. Um, the eastern the eastern populations being more resident or short distance migrants, and the birds in the birds in the east, apologies, west, west being more resident or short distance migrants, and the birds of the east being more sort of a longer distance migrants. So that being Volpinus, which is which is step buzzard, and what and what we find what we find in southern Africa. So what are the implications of this? You've got you've got up to eleven subspecies of common buzzard. Uh, you've got you've got local local species or rather short distance migrants and you've got longer distance migrants and what's interesting is that old world buzzards only recently diverged so probably 300,000 years ago which which has some interesting implications to identifying buzzards firstly there's there's a lot of hybridization um, across different different hybrid zones hybrid zones between between the various subspecies so in Europe You've got lots of hybridization, and then the implication of that. So some of you may have heard that you know the step buzzard in particular has been known as the, the fingerprint buzzard. So through prolific hybridization, at almost every overlap, you've got you've got a new form of uh, buzzard being produced. So there's lots of lots of variation across across the range of of common buzzard. Dave, is it fair to say that um, a recently diverged uh, family of birds like the buzzards would result in more hybridization. Absolutely, Mike. Because I mean, so, so genetically, they're still very similar. Okay. So wherever you've got some interaction on a sort of geographical basis, there's a high, a high chance of, um, of hybridization, which results in lots of, uh, or I guess, a high, a high instance of um, plumage, plumage variation. So there's an there's interesting correlation between range versus variation. So where, where you've got a fairly localized species, you find that their, their plumage variation is quite low, for example, forest buzzard, but where you have quite um, a, high, a high distribution like step buzzard, you've got um, a very high level of uh, variation within, within um, plumage varieties. So what's interesting there is that, so I guess in summary, buzzards, buzzards have only recently split. Um, there's high levels of hybridization, which has resulted in, uh, I guess, a high range of uh, plumage variation. Um, so th I think this is interesting context when when trying to identify identify buzzards. So let's just quickly chat about. I think it's important that we 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 um, we all I guess speak the same language. Um, so so when it when it comes to identifying buzzards, what what should you be looking at? So here's just a quick a quick flight shot, Mike. I think this is one of your photos. Um, when when looking at a buzzard, you want to you want to focus on the underparts and you want to focus on the wings. So on the wings, you get the you get the leading edge and you get the um, trailing edge, which is which is the the back of the wing. Um, then it's it's important to focus on the the underwing covert. So the underwing covets are this darker darker area of the underwing. The front part of the underwing covert is the the lesser covert, median or the middle part of the covert, and then the greater covets, which which are towards the back of the covert area. Um, so that's important. Obviously, you've got primaries and secondaries, which which make up the flight feathers or also known as remages, 
Um, it's also important to, to look at the carpal patches, which is the, the area sort of close to the carpal joint on the, on the buzzard. Dave, maybe just to um, re reassure everybody who's looking at this diagram and seeing all these names of uh, um, anatomical features of a bird, this was always the page that I skipped over when I looked at a field guide when <laughs> I was six years old. So these uh, names are mostly new to me as well. Good to know, Mike. Um, I'm glad you're learning something. <laughs> always. Cool. So here's a, here's a perch bird. So these are other important features to look at when, when trying to identify a buzzard. You've got the, the underparts, you've got the upper breast and the, and the belly. Uh, you've got the trousers. And then you've got obviously got the eye color. So the, these are these are important things to look at. So it's it's interesting if you look at if you look at the research related to the the uh, uh, I guess old world buzzards or uh, butios. That, so it's, it, there, there are essentially three ways to identify buzzards. One is, one is genetically. Um, second is is morphometrically. So that's actually doing in hand measurements. So that's catching a bird or or, or getting a, uh, looking at a, um, a dead bird and, and measuring actually measuring um, the bird itself. And then finally, there's, there's plumage detail, but based on what I've told you about the, you know, how recently they, they diverged as a group, uh, plumage detail is, can be very tricky. And, and there, are, there are, and I guess this is my caveat, there, there are some buzzards that actually can't be separated in the field or you know, based just on, just on plumage features alone. So I, I guess with 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 IDing, with IDing any bird, it's always it's always useful to start with distribution. Uh, so I've just quickly summarised the, the distribution of, of of each of our occurring buzzards here on the slide. Um, on the left, we've got common buzzards. So this is a regular summer visitor, as well as actually some of them over winter as well. Um, so they, they they occur throughout the region. Um, I guess you could you, you could describe it as a generalist. Then you've got forest buzzard, which is found along the uh, I guess the South, uh, southern parts of Southern Africa. The stronghold is sort of Southern Cape around Nizen and George, but they stretch as far as far west as Cape Town, and then up up sort of the the east coast into the, the eastern parts of um, the country. So, Dave, just to maybe to clarify, that forest buzzard is a Southern African endemic. Spot so, on. It's a bird that one only finds in in Southern Africa, and I think in fact it could be mostly South Africa. There might be some crossover into say Swaziland and, and the yeah, exactly. Jackal buzzard's fairly widespread. Um, it's it's typically a, a mountainous uh, a mountain species, um, but that's also a southern African endemic. Uh, then you've got auger buzzard, which takes over from from jackal buzzard. That that you find in Namibia and Zimbabwe, and it overlaps with jackal buzzard in, in in southern Namibia. Then I've also included mystery buzzards. So mystery buzzard, I'll, I'll get to the details of mystery buzzard. We actually had a question before the webinar as to the latest uh, the latest sort of update on on where things are with mystery buzzard. It's actually quite a, it's quite an interesting story, but they, but they span sort of up the West Coast, uh, down through Cape Town. There's a stronghold, a stronghold on the peninsula and around Elgin. And there's one, there's one suspected record uh, in, in George. Um, so that's a, yeah, it's an interesting story that that's still really unfolding. Then um, on, on the, sort of, I guess the rarer buzzards, redneck buzzard, I think there are five or six records, uh, mainly in the Kalahari Basin. There was one long-standing species in Stilby. Sorry, one, one, one standing bird, uh, a long-standing bird in, in Stilby. Long-legged buzzard. I actually, offhand, I'm not too sure how many records there have been. Maybe, maybe Trevor can comment on that. Um, and Trevor, I know that's, a, that's an invite for you to chip in. Um, tell us when the last long-legged buzzard record was in Southern Africa. And most importantly, did you actually see it? Have you ticked it in the sub-region? We'll wait for your response and everyone will be able to see it. I think, um, I think that, um, I also think that some of the records of, of long-legged buzzard are, are actually under question because it's an incredibly hard bird to tell from, from common buzzard. Eurasian buzzard is, um, Eurasian honey buzzard is, um, it's not a buteur, but it's, it is a buzzard. It's uh, quite wide ranging. Um, you can find it actually pretty much across the region, um, but mainly in the east. And then grasshopper buzzards, and there have been a few records, the first one being in, in Zimbabwe. Right, so that's, it's always important to, if you're trying to separate a tricky buzzard, just refer to the distribution maps as a, as a start. So Dave, there's a response from Kim Brett here that um, she's suggesting it's about 30 years ago, um, possibly seen by Plow Popcroft. So that's a very long time ago and, and probably uh, makes it a, a tricky one to really speak about with any degree mm. of uh, certainty mm. in Southern Africa. Interesting, cool. 
Thanks, Kim. So just some basics, you know, wh wh where does one start with uh, buzzard ID? It, it's, it's, always, it's always useful to start off with trying to age the bird. So are you, are you dealing with a young bird or is it an adult? And a useful way to do that is to look at the eye color. So young buzzards typically have a pale eye, like you can see in the bird on the left, top left, and then an adults generally have darker eyes. And then um, what's also useful, if you've got a perched bird, you can, you can see this bottom photo taken by Great Shot by Trevor. You can see it's got a, a pale eye. It's also got these sort of pale fringings on the, on the, the, on the, um, the wing coverts. It's quite common in raptors to see these pale fringes in younger birds. And when they're in flight, you can actually see on the trailing edge, you can often see, particularly if they're backlit, that they've got, they've got sort of light, a, a light trailing edge to both the primaries and the, and the secondaries. So that's always useful to know. Uh, whether you're dealing with a, um, a younger bird or, or, or an adult. Um, the, the jizz of a buzzard is always important. It's, it's very useful, particularly when trying to tell, our, as I guess, our commoner three buzzards being, being uh, common or step buzzard, a forest buzzard, and, and jackal buzzard. And then habitat, surprising, you wouldn't always think, but the habitat's also, also a, good, a good indicator. Right, so let's, let's dive into the detail. Um, I'm going to run through each of the species and, and just focus on sort of salient, uh, salient species uh, um, features and, um, and, and, and look at a few example, example photos. Um, right, so common buzzard. The, I think all of you probably would have seen common buzzard. It's a, it's a, it's a generalist, so you find it in, in a wide variety of habitats, but it particularly likes open, open country. We often see them on, on, on fence poles or Telephone poles. Dave, have you ever played the game on a trip along the N2 and counted step buzzards and common, well, common buzzards in, in summertime? I, I know we've definitely done that and, and reached over 100 before you even gone beyond Refuse on a Rent. That's impressive. Mike, I haven't played that game. Um, I'm, I'm generally trying to age them. Um, <laughs> so you stopped and, and looked at one for about 20 minutes. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, um, I haven't. But uh, I'll remember that for, 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 my, for my next road trip. Um, so the, the adult, adult common buzzards have obviously have dark eyes. What's, what's most distinctive and the, the best feature, particularly on a perch bird, is it's got, it's, it's got barring on its underparts um, and quite extensive barring. That can be quite hard to see at times. So this bird, you can see here in this photo, it's, the, the barring is fairly obvious. But in some birds which are quite dark and where the barring is, is, is quite dense, um, it can actually look like it's one complete color. But if you look carefully, you can actually see some sort of finer barring in there. So that's important. The, um, the underwing coverts are also important. So this, this part here where I'm highlighting with the, with the cursor, the, um, the under coverts are, um, the underwing coverts are typically dark. So in forest buzzard, you will have a pale section here. And um, so that, that's, that's quite useful when, when trying to tell from forest buzzard. The juveniles can be trickier. The juveniles and immatures or younger birds. Juveniles being a bird in its first calendar year and immatures being it kind of includes juveniles, but it, it includes subadults. Um, so, so younger birds have lighter eyes. They are typically streaked below, so they won't have barring yet. But what's important is that the streaking is not is not tear shaped, which you would find in forest buzzard. That's important. And uh, then they've also got a less a less distinct trailing edge to the wing. Um, so the, the the common the common sort of mix up bird here would be would be forest, forest buzzard. Um, yeah, cool. So let's just look at a, a couple of pics. This, uh, so this bird on the left, Mike, I think, I think these are your photos. The, the bird on the left, left, you can see it's got a dark eye. Um, it's got classic barring across the chest. I mean, I think that's, I think that's pretty straightforward. This bird on the right is, is quite interesting. Um, it's got a pale eye, so it's a younger bird. It's got the streaking. And you can see that the streaking, the streaking isn't tear shaped. And it's, I know this photo was also taken in open countries. I think we can safely say this is not a forest buzzard, but it's a, it's a, I, I use common and step interchangeably because we, because we have the um, Vulpinus subspecies um, known as step buzzard. I, um, I'll also refer to it as, as a step buzzard. These two photos here. So on the left, you've got a younger bird. It's got a pale eye, um, also quite streaked. Um, no, no real apparent barring yet. Um, streaking is also, also not tear shaped. So I think we can safely say that's a, that's a step or common buzzard. I've included this rather uh, rubbish shot on the right, but uh, that, you know that that that's often how you see buzzards. So this bird is actually one of those examples I mentioned earlier, where the barring is quite is quite dense, so you can't actually easily see it. But if you if you zoom in closely, you can actually see that there are fine bars, um, nice nice sort of well marked 
um, well marked uh, underwing coverts as well. So that that's a nice classic uh, classic step buzzard. Right. The next is um, next is forest buzzard. So forest buzzard is is a there are two theories. It's, it's either split off from mountain buzzard, which you find in East Africa, or it's a derivative of uh, common buzzard. Yeah, Mike? So can I interrupt you? There's a, there's a question from um, Baz Herbst on the chat here. He, he talks about the fact that on the, the app, there are various forms of this buzzard, which is obviously the common buzzard that we're speaking about. So he re it refers to gray, brown, brown, rufous, and dark. Um, so maybe just uh, <clears throat> if you could answer that question, I guess you, you did refer to it uh, mm. briefly at the beginning. Yeah. But maybe to talk about how, the variability of, of the plumages. Exactly. So the step buzzard is an incredibly variable uh, species in terms of plumage. And it ranges from, as, as you've described, from uh, sort of gray colors through to brown colors, roofers, to, to incredibly dark colors, almost black, like really dark brown, to, to, re to really sort of blackish, blackish birds. So they, they are incredibly variable. Um, because because they are a, a fairly um, they, they are a very diverse group in terms of all their subspecies and high levels of hybridization, um, so they, they are they are incredibly variable. And also their their geographical range is, is very wide, which which um, which then um, encourages them to develop all these different phenotypes or rather plumage plumage uh, characters. Um, so yes, they are they are incredibly variable. Great, thank you. So so forest buzzard is a is a is a forest specialist, so they they they're actually more compact than so I mentioned the the, the, the important of jizz earlier. They're a more compact buzzard than common buzzard or, or even jackal buzzard. Um, so adapted to living in a forest a forest habitat. So when I um, whenever I see a forest buzzard, I, it always stands out to me that they they're quite a compact bird. They they tend to be more flappy because their wings are a bit shorter and then sort of narrow, um, sort of wider than a common buzzard. Um, so in the um, and also theoretically, their 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 plumage their their plumage characters aren't as aren't as um, wide ranging as um, common buzzard or step buzzard. The adults have dark eyes. Um, they typically the adults typically always have this sort of U shaped um, white band across across the chest, or dividing the dividing the, the chest and the, the lower belly. Um, the key characteristic are these sort of tear shape tear shape markings on the bird, and and that varies from you get very white birds to to birds which are a bit darker. And um, what's very important on a, on, a, on a step buzzard, when you see them in flies, and I'll show you on a, on a following photo. Forest buzzard. Sorry, forest buzzard. The um, underwing covets, the, the middle of the covets, of the median covets are, are white, um, which is important. If you look in the field guides, none of them tend to mention that you, you get barring on a, on a forest buzzard, but in fact you do, and I'll show you some examples. Um, so, that, so that's an interesting feature, a feature you need to be careful of. When, when, when trying to tell it from, from common buzzard, but the barring t t tends to be restricted to the flanks, to the, the side of the, the lower parts. Um, the young birds obviously have a lighter eye and the, the plumage is quite similar to an adult. So here, two shots. You can see the classic tear shape marking on this bird on the left. Um, this, this photo on the right, you can see those, um, those white um, median covets, which I, which I mentioned. This, this carpal marking is also, is also quite distinctive on um, in, in, in flight as well, sort of a little. You, you're talking. Tip. You're talking about the the comma shape. Exactly. The yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah exactly. The, the the major portion of the carpal patch is is pale, mm. and then you've got a, a very distinctive comma shape on, on the carpal bar on yeah. the carpal patch. Yeah, exactly. So this these shots aren't great, but but this is um, some some research done on on forest buzzards, and you can see this barring on this this left bird here, and in fact all these all these. Uh, these skins here, you can see this flank barring, um, which isn't often spoken about in field guides, which is interesting. And then there's two more flight shots. Um, you can see you can see that that carpal comma you were mentioning, Mike, very nicely, and you can see these sort of white white median covers, which are which are very distinctive um, on the on these two birds. A nice shot by Trevor showing a bird carrying carrying nesting material. Cool. So next, um, mystery buzzard. So we had, as I said, there was a question before before the webinar about this. So Lyle, Lyle Gwynn did his master's thesis on looking at the genetic, the morphometric, which is the, I guess, the sizing and the plumage detail, trying to essentially unpick the mystery. And the, the results he, he, he uh, landed on or, or found with the fact that these mystery buzzards are hybrids between steppe forest and possibly menetries buzzard, which is a, a species that, it's a subspecies found in Europe, 
and actually was was thought to be a short distance migrant, but they they found some genetic evidence that it could in fact be um, in these mystery buzzards as well, which, which is quite interesting. So w what you're suggesting is that um, a short distance migrant like men or short distance distant bird like menetries is possibly hybridizing with some of the common buzzards that they're not traveling into into our Western Cape area and those are the ones that we're, we're seeing here and those are starting to breed in the Western Cape. Yeah, or, or the Manatrees buzzards are in fact migrating to... Manatrees as well. Yeah, okay. so, uh, to, to the Western Cape and, and interbreeding here. What, uh, another, interesting, another interesting result from his research is that there, there might be an undescribed uniform rufous form of forest buzzard, just to complicate things further. Um, this obviously requires further research. Um, and there was no genetic, uh, genetic evidence of hybridization in those particular specimens, which is very interesting. Um, so essentially a full species forest buzzard? Well, a, a version of forest buzzard that has completely uh, uniform rufous okay. underparts, but, but also physically a bigger bird, which is interesting. Um, so, that, so, that, so that needs more research. And, um, and as you would expect, these birds have a very wide plumage range. And so the, 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 I guess the, the net result of this is that if you see if you see a buzzard that looks like a common buzzard, in fact, even a forest buzzard in winter around Cape Town or Elgin, um, it might be a, a mystery buzzard. So it, 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 it makes it quite hard. For, for example, two weeks ago, I was filling out an Atlas card at Kirstenbosch and I saw one of these mystery buzzards and I, I couldn't list it. Do I, do I list forest or do I list common? So, so Dave, I, I think what you've mentioned is quite important because if you're doing birding big day and you see two of these buzzards, yeah. um, I would suggest you just tick both, just to <laughs> add numbers to your species count. That, I think that's a great idea. Okay, <laughs> cool, here, here are two more great shots. Um, Margaret uh, McIver took these, took these photos. She, she actually, she, she, she posted a great story on Facebook and how she actually, she, she saw the, I think it was the male, Break, break off a branch and, and go and actually start building the nest. But it took her ages to find the nest because they're very crafty and very secretive. So it sort of led her on a bit of a wild, a wild buzzard chase. Eventually she found it. And so this, I think this, this bird here was the female. And um, again, that's the female. And, the, the, and this is the young, the recently fledged um, buzzard on the right. So, I mean, you can see this is an incredibly dark bird. And actually, I mean, if I had to see that, I, I mean, I wouldn't even, it's really, like, where do you start? Um, so it, it really has, I guess, thrown the, thrown the, what, the, 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 the cat amongst, amongst the buzzards. The buzzards. The buzzards. Um, yeah. Cool. Then, then jackal buzzards. So, I mean, adult, adult jackal buzzards are... Dave, I'm on top of jackal buzzards, by the way. So... Yes. Jackal buzzards are easy to identify, the adults. Um, <laughs> they, they, yeah, I mean, they, they're awesome birds. They're really distinctive. The adults have nice broad wings. They actually look like sort of many, many um, battalions. Uh, you know, with that sort of white, white in the wing and that sort of rusty, rusty chest. Um, and it's also quite a big, powerful buzzard, um, which, which is useful when, when, when looking at the younger birds, immatures and uh, juveniles, trying to separate them. So I won't really go into the, um, the identification of the adults, but what I will say is that every now and then you will see a white-breasted form of jackal buzzard. And some research showed that they looked at jackal buzzards in sort of the, the northwestern parts of southern Africa and also the eastern parts. And, and sh it showed that there's, so the, the stronghold of jackal buzzard in, in Southern Africa is around, or rather Eastern Cape and Lesotho. And there'd been no records of white-breasted jackal buzzards in that area. Whereas if you go into the Northwest and drier parts of the and Bushman land, you, I think the, I think they found up to 30% of jackal buzzards are a white-breasted form, which then throws up the question, are these, are these auger buzzards? which are, and in fact, is this a hybrid zone? So are these auger buzzards that are interbreeding with jackal buzzards? Because genetically, they are very similar. Yeah, I've, I've seen plenty of the white, white chested form up around uh, Springbok and Port Nolith. Yeah, exactly. So they're, they're pretty common up there. Yeah. The, the juveniles and immatures can be, can be tricky to separate from, from common buzzard. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's, a, it's a bigger buzzard. They, 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 they're quite solid birds, um, longer winged, uh, what's quite useful if you see a bird that's perched, the um, the, the the wing feathers typically protrude at least at least uh, they're at least as long as a tail, but if but if not longer, um, they've also got a strong bill and more of like an eagle-like head, like a rounded head, and um, we will see in some of the photos that follow. The the underparts are quite variable in jackal buzzard. They go from sort of very pale 
to to quite dark. Um, and then also when as they age into second and third years, they they can change quite a bit. So you can see you can see in these birds here, you've got a very pale bird on the left. Mike, this is your shot from Strumtown. Yeah, I'll, I'll wait till you get to the next slide and then maybe tell the, the, the quick story on that one. But cool. yes, that's a, a pick from Strunk and So you can see it's a young bird. It's got a pale eye. It's got this sort of broad, broad head, um, which, which you won't see in, in common buzzard and the strong bill. Um, also broad wings. Um, it's a big bird. It's got these quite sort of um, marked, marked underwing coverts, which is important if you're trying to separate it from, uh, um, from auger buzzard. And this bird in the right, this is this is a subadult. You can see it's you can see the, the adult plumage starting to starting to show through. Dave, there's some there's some comments coming through. Okay, I don't know if you want to respond. Um, there's uh, a, a question about are you sure there are no jackal buzzards in more central northern Namibia? Um, I'm, I'm suggesting that that's coming from someone that you know because of the surname, but uh, maybe pause that one. And then um, there's also a comment here that they breed in the, the Gullis uh, Plains. Um, so not, not necessarily always close to, to mountains. Absolutely. Very interesting. Yes. So they, they have actually, you can find them in, in sort of open farmland habitat. And I guess with um, they, they, my understanding is that they do typically breed on, on cliffs rather than trees, but it'd be interesting to know if they are breeding in gums as well. I wonder if anyone can comment on that. Um, and then Michael Mason, you've said, yes, also ni nice bulge in the secondaries as well. That's right. It's got a distinctive, um, distinctive wing shape. So I'll just quickly comment, Mike, on these, on these two birds, but both of these are your shots. I think this left bird was shot at, um, taken at Rhodes Memorial. You can see these really sort of quite rich um, markings versus this bird on the right. So the bird on the left was taken at Rhodes Memorial. The bird on the right is a Strumpentan, which the birds look similar of age, both pale eyes, but very, but very different um, underparts. So, so maybe just to, to jump in quickly on that uh, bird on the right, I was birding with my son at uh, Stranfontein, probably uh, early February, maybe mid-February, and it was um, very soon after the very um, well-twitched redneck buzzard at um, still by. And so <laughs> redneck buzzard was very uh, foremost in my mind, and we came around um, a corner down at uh, one of the bottom pans, and this bird flew um, over a June initially and then eventually came back and perched on this, this big lump of sort of um, it was a, a dead palm tree and I and myself and, and Adam both had um, heart palpitations because we thought we had uh, found a, a redneck buzzard in, in the Strunfontein area. So after um, sending the pick to quite a few people from the site um, we were disappointingly led down the road of it being just a, a jackal buzzard with very pale plumage. So um, it just does show um, that it's not only about the plumage, it's also about the shape of the bird. And, and in this instance, it was the stronger stronger bill and the, the bigger head that led us away from redneck buzzard, which tends to have a much smaller mm. smaller head than jackal buzzard. Cool. He had two nice um, shots of, of perch birds. You can see in this left-hand bird, the, the, um, the wingtips, the primaries, are protruding at least as far as the tail which is a nice feature, it's a big bird. And also it's got that strong head, that big bill. Same as a bird on the right, you can see it's, uh, this is a sub adult, sort of long, long, long legs, sort of strong, big, big feet as well. So a, a, a big bird compared to a common buzzard. So Dave, can I just interrupt? We, we intend for the, the webinar to last about an hour. Um, I think we're, we're running a little bit over time, but hopefully um, everyone's enjoying themselves and, and we'll stick around for a couple of minutes longer. So just to give you the timing on, on the, the webinar. Cool, next is auger buzzard. So distribution is a good guide. Um, it's found in Namibia and Zimbabwe, um, but like I said earlier, it, it does overlap with, with jackal buzzard in Namibia and, and probably, um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if there was some hybridization happening. It's, it looks superficially like a, a jackal buzzard. I mean, they are, they are very closely related. The, the key feature to separate them are the underwing coverts. So an auger buzzard has got pale underwing coverts in both the adults and the um, younger birds. So, that, so that's the key feature to look for. So if you see, if you see a white-breasted buzzard in, say, for example, the Northern Cape, um, take a photo of it perched, but also flash it. Um, or, <laughs> we're not, we're or, wait for, <laughs> or wait for a car to drive past um, and hoot and, and flash it, but, but, but try and get a shot of underwing as well to, to really be certain that you, you are in fact seeing an or it might just be, might just be a step. I mean, a, a jackal. Right, so 
Eurasian honey buzzard. Now, this 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 is a uh, these are, this is quite interesting. So, honey buzzards seem to be on the increase. There seem to be more and more records, and it's hard to know if there really are more birds or if birders are just more tuned into what to look for and are better at identifying them. And I also think the uh, also a quick, a quick shout out to Trevor for his 11 year anniversary for the Rare Bird Alert. But I think that's also probably done a lot in I guess educating birders on, on you know the Every year, sort of every week, twice a week in summer, you're seeing photos of honey buzzards. You 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 then just get more tuned into um, into seeing them. So the adults are pretty distinctive. They they've got these sort of bright bright yellow eyes and these gray ears. They've uh, they've got dark carpal um, carpal patches, which is distinctive, and um, you can't really see it in these darker birds. But what's important is to look for these these uh, these sort of bars in the flight feathers. Um, you'll always see at least two or three. Um, bars um, this depending so the theory is that the, if you see two bars or one bar that's sort of very close to the covets that's generally a male um, but if you see sort of broader broader sort of selection of barring that's that's usually a, a female um, and then the barring what you see in the in the wing you then see repeated in the tail you'd see three bars usually two sort of higher up and then and then, and then one one lower down the the juveniles and immatures that's that's where things get tricky um, they typically have um, we'll always start off with a dark eye and a yellow sear. That's of, often quite an obvious feature. The, the most common form of, of um, the young birds is generally sort of a typical sort of brown bird below. And, um, and often they'll have dark secondaries. Um, the dark secondaries are sort of black tipped flight feathers or fingers and primaries and quite often have a sort of dark, a dark facial, facial mask. You've got some pics of that, haven't you? Yeah. So this bird on the left is a, is a nice adult. You can see it's got this sort of distinct trailing edge, um, well-marked trailing edge. Um, and you can see sort of one or two bars. I think this is a male. Um, this bird on the right is a cracking shot, also of, a, also of a male. It's got these sort of wing bars here, um, repeated here in the tail, these sort of very, very distinctive um, bars in the tail. This is a... This is not a great shot, but this is actually often how you see raptors. Um, this, is a, this is a young bird. You can see those sort of that brown below, like I mentioned, you can see the dark carpal patches and these dark secondaries. And um, they've also got long tails, which I haven't mentioned. Uh, long tails in this, in this bird here on the left. Uh, this, this, this tail here is fan, but you can see it's much longer than what you'd see in any of our resident buzzards or, or even common buzzard. Here's another young bird on the right. You can see those dark secondaries. You can see the, the barring in the, in the flight feathers quite nicely here. And that sort of dark, dark carpal patch and these, these black, black tip primaries. Another, another young bird, you can see the dark mask I mentioned, um, dark secondaries, uh, sort of brown below, uh, quite a broad tail. You can, see, you can sort of make out the, um, the, 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 um, the bands and the, the tail as well. And then here's one more, just of a, this is an adult bird. Um, with the, the dark carpal patches uh, showing up nicely. <clears throat> Another one of a young bird and actually a perch bird. So this is a, this is a young bird. It's probably sub adult. You can see that the, 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 the eyes starting to lighten, um, but it's still got the, still got the yellow sear, um, which is distinct of, a, of a, um, an immature bird. Um, it's a nice uh, perch shot. Right, then I'm just going to run for you through a, a couple of the, <clears throat> I guess, much much uh, uh, rarer, rarer species. Um, this is redneck buzzard. So this is a shot of the bird from Stillby. What's, what's important to look for here is obviously the red on the neck and the head, sort of a rufous, a rufous wash around the neck. Um, the, the underwing covets are important. It's got, it's got white median covets like you would expect on a, on a forest buzzard, but it's got a much more distinct little uh, C-shaped uh, marking at the carpal joint. That's important. It's also got typically finer barring in the flight feathers than, than, than you would see in a forest or a, um, or a common buzzard. And it's got unmarked, it's got unmarked trousers. Um, so a combination of that, but both in adult and, uh, and younger redneck buzzards is... Um, so Dave, just to, go, go, just to comment back on the, the honey buzzards, there's some comments coming through, and, mm -hmm. and I think it's a feature that's, that's quite important with honey buzzard, is the pigeon head. It's obviously got a, a relatively small head and, and often on a, on a longish sort of neck and quite distinctive when you see it. Um, yeah. That's look quite small. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, they, they, they've also got those sort of weak, weak bills because they yes. don't, um, they obviously just need to, they eat honey and, um, and sorry, bees yeah. and wasps. And they also have weak feet. Um, so quite weak feet when you see them perched. 
I won't go into detail on grasshopper buzzard. This is this is Brendan Ryan's photo. This is actually the first the the, the, the actual bird seen in Wangi um, a few years back. It's very distinctive when it flies. It's got these sort of red in the red in the flight feathers. Right. I'm not going to I'm not going to cover long leg buzzard. I think it's 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 too technical and there's too much controversy about the the separation of long leg buzzard from from common buzzard. I won't get into that. I think we could probably do a whole webinar on that for the the hardcore raptor files. Um, so you always get curveballs with raptors. I've just I've just thrown these into um, I guess yeah, just highlight the fact that you you do get birds that look quite similar to our our, our resident species or local species. Um, but anyone want to sort of hazard a guess as to what these birds are? Um, you, can, you can throw a, a comment into the the, the, the chat. Maybe let's uh, give it a second or two. See what everyone thinks these birds are in in these two shots. Are we allowed to ask David, is it the same species? I know it's not the same bird, but would it be the same species? Or is it the same bird? Uh, no, different bird. Different bird. Um. We're getting young Eurasian honey on the left and uh, honey on the right as well. Um, that would probably be um, my guess on the left-hand bird. Um, and <clears> the, <throat> the right-hand bird, I, I think you've probably thrown us a proper curveball here. Am I right? Uh, yeah, so this is, I mean, I, I've actually missed the bird on the right. I've, I've mistaken for um, honey buzzard before. We once were actually at Kirstenbosch and um, we had, I think, five or six honey buzzards circling, circling above Kirstenbosch, just sort of uh, below window, um, window Gorge. And after watching them for about 20 minutes, eventually realized that actually one of them wasn't a honey buzzard. It was, in fact, an African harrier hawk. So African harrier hawks, superficially, when they're young, the young birds look very like honey buzzards. But the key feature, so they, they, they're much bigger birds. They've got much broader wings, and they've got these long fingers. And honey buzzards, Eurasian honey buzzards, always have um, five fingers. Um, so let's quickly just jump back here uh, for an example. Here, uh, where's a good one? Here. So you can see one, two, three, four, five. Um, whereas if you go here and look at this, Harry Hawk, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so, that, so, that, so that's always useful. Um, a much broader wing and um, also doesn't have the dark carpal patches. So it's got this clear uh, combination of the broad wing and no carpal patch is, is, a, is a good way to tell them apart. Um, and then what's interesting, if you, if you look at, if you then dial into young Harrier Hawks, one needs to be careful that you're not looking at a, a crested honey buzzard. Because superficially, a, uh, a, hairy, a young hairy hawk also looks like a crested honey buzzard. So this bird on the left is actually not a Eurasian honey buzzard. It's a crested honey buzzard or um, that's oriental. Su that's super cool to throw that one. <laughs> so the one on the left, oriental honey buzzard, which uh, looks very much like Eurasian honey buzzard. But it, again, it hasn't got the dark carpal patches. Um, and it's also got the, it's got the six fingers on the, on the primary. So um, this one's not a perfect specimen. It's got three. That, there, there's a six there. Um, but I'd say the main, I guess the most reliable feature um, would be this, um, the lack of a carpal patch. And, oh, uh, through this in as well. So Mel Tripp sent this through before, before the webinar. These were some, uh, some raptors photographs on the West Coast, and there was much debate as to what they, what they were. Um, when you look at them and they're standing next to a porcupine, it, it looks like an eagle, um, but actually, they, it was concluded that they are in fact young jackal buzzards. Um, you can see this sort of uh, pale edging on the wing, um, pale eye. But you know, with, without seeing the, the bottom of the leg, you, know, you would see the exposed, the exposed legs here. You, it, it creates a very different impression. Um, I, can yeah. at, I can at least identify the porcupine. Eh? <laughs> cool. Um, just quickly, some, some, uh, some good resources. Uh, this uh, raptor guide by Ulrich. Um, Oprilla is, um, is, is, is really good. And then if you want to get into some more detailed stuff, the flat ID of Raptors by Dick Forsman is, is, is very good as well. Um, right, just to quickly wrap up. So what is this buzzard? This, this photo was taken above Kirsten Bosch, um a few years ago, like I said. And based on what we've discussed, um, it's, it's a young bird. You can't really see in this photo. It's got a pale eye. Um, the covets are well marked. And it appears to have sort of, uh, I, I would say, tear-shaped marking. So I've always thought this was a forest buzzard. 
Um, it was also calling a lot. I mean, I have an advantage. I was there. So it was calling a lot. Um, it, and, there, and there was another one as well. So they'd obviously bred in the area. So I, at the time, concluded there were five <laughs> buzzards. But actually, I think there might be Cape buzz, uh, rather Mr. Mr. Buzzards. buzzards. Um, but who knows? Who knows? <laughs> Cool. So that, I, I guess I guess the the final conclusion we make here is that there are some birds that you just um, can't pin down to a, mm. a species level. Mm. Exactly.